of the cooler sci-fi movie franchises to uh, be around the last uh, couple decades has been the Alien series. And I think a big part of that has been the really care they put into the creature des uh, design. And one of my favorites is the face hugger. So uh, the the point of this uh, tech, uh, tutorial series is to work on modeling, texturing, and rigging and animating a face hugger. So in chapter one, uh, we set up our modeling environment by place, uh, placing our orthographic reference images in our background of our viewports. Uh, next, we start blocking out the basic shapes of the torso and legs using a variety of polygon modeling techniques. Uh, in chapter two, uh, we add a tail and start contouring the legs and making sure our edge loop placement is appropriate for uh, skin deformations. In chapter three, now we're ready to start combining our different parts together. Using the poly pen and a few other tools, we'll prep the areas of geometry that are to be welded to ensure a nice edge flow once it's collapsed to a single object. In chapter four, uh, once we have half our model done, before we collapse the symmetry object, we're going to start uh, setting up our UV coordinates. We select our leg polygons and create an edge selection that will be our UV seams. Now, with the proper setup, Open the UV Peeler tool, adjust the sliders to your preference, and bam, nice symmetrical UV islands. After collapsing our symmetry tag, uh, using a combination of selections and projections, we lay out a nicely packed page of UV islands. Chapter 5. With the sculpting layout open, we hit subdivide sub several times. We isolate the legs with the mask and hide functions to maximize visibility and system resources. We'll explore different methods of using the stamp and brush tools. Then we isolate the torso and give it the same treatment. In chapter six, now we isolate the tail and use a, a stencil to paint some wrinkles. Then we'll explore the knife tool to get some deeper details. Uh, continuing with the knife tool on the torso, setting up st a s steady stroke and pen effects to customize our brush style. Uh, in chapter seven, uh, following our reference images, we start blocking out the major surface details with the mask and pull brushes. Then we set up some stamps to apply wrinkles and veins, and then polish up our final details. Chapter eight. Now we start. Uh, now that we've sculpted our high-res mesh, we're ready to bake out our various maps. In the Bake Sculpt Object Manager, we set up our our settings and paths for the maps that we bake out. After some calculations during the baking, we have our low poly mesh with a material containing the maps that we just created. Now we are ready to open the body paint UV layout and start painting. Then we start blocking out our color with various painting tools. Chapter nine, uh, we continue painting and we explore the gradient tool, the line tool, and uh, we make a customized brush to fit our specific purposes. And in chapter 10, before we start building up our material, we'll set up a simple rendering environment, a floor plane, camera, lighting. Then we start uh, fine tuning our luminance channel with the subsurface scatter. Uh, the maps baked out from the sculpting process are also put in their proper channels. In chapter 11, now we are ready to make our creation move. First, we start stretching out, the, uh, sketching out the bones with the joint creation tool making sure to precisely line up our bones with our mesh. Uh, we'll apply I IK tags on the legs and spline IK for the tail. In chapter 12, continuing with our rigging process, we make sure all our bones have the proper name using the naming tool. Then we are ready for the bind process, which gives us basic skin weighting. Using the paint weight tool and the weights manager, we fine tune the influence each bone has on the mesh. <clears throat> chapter 13. Now, using the sculpt tools, we make several pose tweaks which create an animatable point morph tag. This will enable us to animate subtler movements not controlled by the bones, breathing, mouth movements, etc., this kind of stuff. Chapter 14. Here, we set up a pose morph tag which will enable us to store poses of the entire character hierarchy. Then we create some individual poses as well as uh, cyclic poses for easily, uh, for easily making looped movements. Chapter 15. In this chapter, we set up our render settings such as renderer, global illumination, then we go through a bunch of test renders using various light arrangements and material settings using the picture viewer. 
we'll compare render side by side as well as render times and then we give it a little extra kick with some filtering in chapter 16 here we'll explore the visual selector tag we start by replacing the default human image with one of our modeling views then we go about painting and associating our newly made markers with the corresponding control nulls then we create a few selection objects to make uh, certain groups selections a little quicker chapter 17 first we start blocking out a walk cycle by keyframing the controllers uh, which we turn into uh, motion clips with which we can loop and control with more precision uh, for the tail we'll add an additional IK tag with dynamics enabled to create some realistic secondary motion uh, in chapter 18 in our final chapter we create more complex use of the motion clips as well as animating our point morphs we'll do some uh, preview renders to check out our results and I hope this series will help you create dynamic animation for any sort of unworldly creatures you can imagine.